Lightning strikes so quickly that if you blink, you might miss it. But what if I told you that there's a place where lightning is a constant, a place where it strikes as many as 300 days out of the year for up to nine hours a night, a place where lightning is so concentrated that you can literally read a newspaper at night from its brightness. I'm talking about Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. It's the largest lake in South America, and it was declared by NASA to be the lightning capital of the world. Lake Maracaibo is a Caribbean sea bay that's bordered by the Andes Mountains on three sides and fed by the Catatumbo River. Where the Catatumbo River meets Lake Maracaibo is the hot spot for what's been dubbed Catatumbo Lightning. It typically starts at about an hour after dusk, lighting up the mouth of the river and turning it into what locals have called a river of fire or a never-ending storm. Catatumbo lightning is so frequent and bright that 19th century navigators used the area as a lighthouse to help them find their way along the Caribbean coast. Legend has it that Sir Francis Drake's attack on Maracaibo was thwarted because the lightning kept exposing his ships like a giant strobe light. Can you imagine bringing someone home for the holidays and you have to prep them like, hey, just so you know, the town I grew up in has this thing called a river of fire. And um, I just wanted you to be prepared in case you noticed a never ending lightning storm. It's kind of our thing. It's traditional. It's been around for 500 years. That's right, this storm has been going on for 500 years. 500 years. But how do you measure lightning? And how much is a lot? Meteorologists have been measuring lightning at surface weather stations and with flash counters since the early 1920s. But it wasn't until we actually started using satellites that we could compare the world's lightning hotspots to other huge climate factors. So in 1997, an instrument called the Lightning Imaging System was launched aboard a satellite as part of NASA's Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission. This satellite collected data until 2015, and it revealed that with an average flash rate density of of 232.52 flashes per year per square kilometer, that Catatumbo lightning is in fact the highest density lightning anywhere in the world. For comparison, Florida, which is surprisingly the lightning capital of the United States, clocked in at 79 flashes per year per square kilometer. But a high lightning frequency isn't unheard of. Before this new data was analyzed, the title of lightning capital of the world actually belonged to an area near Kabare, which is in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Not only does Congo have a lot of locations on this high lightning frequency list, but the African continent in general has 283 locations on the list of top 500 places with the highest lightning frequency. So what makes lightning more likely to strike in these locations at such a high frequency? To understand that, you need to understand how lightning's made. Scientists believe that lightning's formed when warm, moist air that's close to the ground rises upwards to meet the colder air above. The higher this moist air rises, the taller the thunderstorm cloud it creates, and this sets the scene for an amazing set of reactions. The warm, moist air rises into the cold atmosphere and starts to freeze. Some of it freezes into light ice particles, and others freeze into heavier hail. The hail is too big to be continuously pushed upwards by the wind, so it starts to fall. When this happens, the hail becomes negatively charged and the lighter ice particles become positively charged. So you end up with this storm cloud that has concentrations of charges, like one area is very positively charged and one area of the cloud is very negatively charged. Whenever you have charges that are concentrated but polarized in this way, they want to stabilize. So a network of conductive channels starts to form. Those are the thin white veins that you might see spreading out across the sky. Some of them fizzle out, but the ones that connect to an area of opposite charge create lightning. These connections can happen within clouds or they can happen when one of these trails ends up connecting with a positively charged particle on the ground. Now, there are lightning storms all over the world, 
But what is it about Lake Maracaibo that creates such a perfectly predictable lightning storm for nine hours a night, 300 days out of the year? To figure this out, an international team of climate researchers led by Angel Munoz sent weather balloons over Lake Maracaibo in 2015. They attached micro sensors to the balloons and released them at various heights to measure temperature, humidity, and pressure. What they found was that the geography of Lake Maracaibo being flanked in a horseshoe shape on three sides by the Andes Mountains creates the perfect conditions for a storm. During the hot hours of the day, the sun's radiation heats up the land around the lake and generates a breeze coming from the Caribbean Sea. This breeze carries moisture from the sea, picks up water from the lake, and heads towards the Andes Mountains. Because the lake is surrounded by the mountains on three sides, when this wind hits the mountains, it has nowhere else to go but up. And so it shoots upward and forms a storm cloud. But at dusk, things change. So air over land cools a lot faster than air over water. So this breeze actually reverses direction about an hour after sunset. Cool air heads down the mountain and meets the warm air that's rising from the lake. Inside these tall clouds, the ice crystals start to collide with hail and you begin to get these areas of concentrated opposite charges. And when they attempt to stabilize by moving towards each other, you get lightning. Catatumbo lightning is special because this process is fueled by the year-round supply of moist air that is evaporated from the lake during the day because of the hot tropical sun. The satellite from NASA's mission actually showed that the air high above Lake Maracaibo and the Catatumbo River is full of scattering ice. Lots of places with high density lightning have features that are similar to that of Lake Maracaibo. They usually have a complex landscape, are mountainous, are usually tropical, and usually feel the effects of things like extra tropical cyclones. And it makes sense that Catatumbo lightning peaks during the wetter months of September and October when the wind has the chance to pick up the most moisture. But outside of looking super cool, are there any perks to living in a place that has a constant lightning storm? I mean, can we harness any of this free energy to do things like, I don't know, power people's homes? No. Although many engineers have put forth proposals to capture lightning in a series of rods, storage capacitors, and transformers to convert it into usable energy, we just don't have the technology to capture and convert the 50,000 amps of current flowing through a single lightning bolt. To be honest, what we really need is a better way to predict lightning strikes and lightning breaks to make the lake safer for fishermen and to allow for the maintenance of the more than 15,000 miles of oil and gas pipelines running under Lake Maracaibo that are in need of repair. Now, as weird as it is that there is a place where people have been born and raised for generations and generations amidst a constant lightning storm, it's even weirder to think about the two instances, one in 1910 and one from January to March in 2010, when Catatumbo lightning stopped. Just dead silent, not a single lightning bolt. Naturally, scientists wanted to know what was going on, and what they realized was that prolonged drought conditions caused by El Nino muted the lightning. As weather patterns get more extreme, we could see cycles of things like El Nino and La Nina go from once every 20 years to once every 10 years, which means that Catatumbo lightning might be a little more varied in the future. But for now, it rages on as the absolutely shocking 500-year-old high-density never-ending storm. That's all for this episode. Keep an eye out for lightning and I will see you outside.